else? Let's see. Oh my goodness. Looks like a palace. Like, a... Scary things could come out of any, any one of those windows. I'm Zachary Fowler. And that's the Wooded Beardsman. And this is season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods. So last October, I headed up to the backwoods of Canada to meet up with the Wooded Beardsman and do just that for seven days. Last time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4. We've reached our limit on beaver stew. That's not a good sign, let me tell you that. That's nasty. Dry heaving a little bit and I find a spot for myself. This isn't... Creepy or weird at all, is it? Just pack that duck grousing with uh, some bear fat. All right, she's done. What is that? That's kind of creepy. Must be like a mining test hole or something. And now, day five of Seven Day Wilderness Living Challenge. Good morning. It's like 6 30. It's really still pretty dark, but is a scooch of light coming? I'm gonna head, head out there, get ready for the ducks. We gotta do some early morning duck hunting. Coffee water's on. I'm gonna go wait for my shot at some ducks. I'm ready. Sounds like we're not the only people out here. here. Chainsaws down the way. Feels like just like being at home in the woods in Maine now. We 
dueling chainsaws going on over there. Whoops, I forgot to turn the mic on when I switched cameras, so I'll just have to dub something over it for you. <sighs> yeah, uh, that's good. Good stuff. Early, early morning stuff. <clears throat> that uh, instant coffee will really put Sarah on your chest. I almost feel it growing. I knew I shouldn't have forgot that blackout coffee. That's good stuff. Would have been so much better. After drinking this swill for seven days, I won't, nope, I won't forget again to bring my blackout coffee. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, how's it going? You, you know, there's some trees over there. They're really big ones, big. You wouldn't believe how big they are. And you get up to them, and then you can see them. Right, right over, right over there, and over there, and a couple more over there. And I, I was looking at them, and I think they're pines. A couple more up, 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 up that way too. The woods is full of pines. I like the pines; they're my favorite tree. You know, what's your favorite tree? I bet you're more of an oak. Yeah, I, I like oak. Yeah, I like uh, any tree I can make a slingshot out of. You know me. Speaking of slingshots, I saw a jackalope last night. He ran across the the other side of the river. It was pretty awesome. I mean, I, I only ever seen him stuffed. Well, breakfast served. Breakfast. What are you yeah. gonna go? What are you gonna go for? That's the question. A little bit of everything. Yeah, that's, that's the duck, rule, right? Duck gross. Like a little bit of oh, fat. There's a piece of bear hair in there. Gross. A little bit of grouse leg. A little bit of... Alright, it needs some more adobo spice on there. It does? Yep, 100%. Is there adobo spice? Yeah? Yeah, just, yeah, right on. Oh, uh, yeah. lots. Alright. There should be some fat globules, which you will be excited about. Right? Mm. Yeah, I didn't eat fat globules yesterday. No. So I'm putting them back on the diet today. I'll have a couple of those. They're all grizzled up in here. They look so good. Yeah, they are. They are good. Um, when you do keto, or according to Zach, the proper ratio is, is it 50/50 or 60/40? It's it's 60/40. 60 percent fat to 65 percent fat in your diet. Fat calories. Yes, not volume. Because not like, weight. No, because volume. That. That's you know, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it but might weight. like visually. It might only be like like 30% looking fat because of the amount sure. of calories from the fat so you know I've been eating like 50% fat so just trying to eat 50% fat and 50% meat right. because when Pro you're protein yeah protein so when you're surviving on just meat it's it's like 80 20 if you don't have anything else to add into it right yes so to, if you're going to be healthy and things like that mm. um, that tastes so good doesn't the, it little taste, globules it, of yeah. fat are just like Grizzled up in the pan, it tastes so good. And you guys might think we get the runs from this, but we don't get the runs from this. No, nope. actually, my body's handled this 100%. Uh, 90%. There was one night where Not I overate, and yeah. uh, that wasn't that was a mistake. So I ended up throwing up a little bit and uh, having the runs, but only slightly. So getting the right ratios is key. And after you go through the adaptive phase, which is you think about five or six days or something like that, yeah. And your body's through it, and you're and you're fine. Well, if you drop in the sugars at some point, yeah, you're gonna go to a, you're gonna go through a phase where it's gonna be, you know, not so good on your, your stomach and things like that, and you're gonna be running to the bushes, using up all your toilet paper, whether it be moss or <laughs> right? otherwise. But yeah, there's a lot of calories in there, and we don't have to eat a lot of volume to get 25 and 3,500 calories because it's mostly calories from fat, and that's the key to not filling up on empty calories and fiber that you might ordinarily find out in the wild. 
Little bits of fat grizzled up. Mmm. It's good, right? That's so good. Mm. It's really good. That that duck that I did over the the grouse ducking actually tastes so much better chopped up today. And back in here, it's got a lot of juice back into it. It doesn't bear. taste dry like it did a little bit yesterday. It was bear, bear fat. The bear fat, yeah. yeah. Bear fat for the win. Frying everything up in bear fat. Everything. Mm -hmm. Bear fat is what's saving us this year. Other fats from animals are not always palatable, especially animals like deer. You wouldn't want not want to eat deer. It's too um, the melting point's too high. So mm. when you put it in your mouth, it instantly solidifies because it's actually too cold in your mouth to keep it a liquid. So it's not it's not fun to eat. Yeah, I've had the deer fat and it sticks to the top of your mouth, mm. and it like coats your mouth, and it's like. Yeah, it's like chalky uh, or waxy or it's just a weird feeling. Yeah, it's not a uh, not pleasant. Not uh, not like the bear. Mm -mm. In season one of the Wilderness Living Challenge, we actually went out and we ate like 18 or 19 pike mm. without the skin on. Mm. Eating just straight up protein every day was a chore. Mm. Um, but having it in fat like this would probably be doable. All right, getting geared up. Beautiful day for it. See if I can't make up for the lack of uh, ducks this morning with bringing home some grouse for the pot. All right, so I'm headed out, keeping the sun just at my one o'clock. So when I come back, I'll keep it at my, at my opposite shoulder. That way, if I don't go for too long, Nice sunny day, so it's easy to easy to keep track of where you are. Oh, big old moose poops. Oh, maybe he's been. Uh, this is where he's been coming. Maybe this is where he came through last night when Chris woke up and heard him crashing through the woods. That looks like that's fairly fresh, pounded through here. I see a lot of broken limbs from dead trees his antlers caught on. So he probably came crashing through here last night and he's come crashing through here other times. Cause those aren't from yesterday. Taking advantage of the direction the moose decided to go. Look at those big old prints. That was probably for sure the one that Chris was talking to this morning at four in the morning. Big old prints heading that way. So I'm working his back trail, taking advantage of the swath he cut through the woods or the path he's chosen to use over the years. All right, I'm gonna head back. I'm gonna keep in the sun right here at one o'clock, two o'clock, somewhere in there. But I wanna come back and end up a little bit upstream so I'm not covering the same trail. So I'm gonna keep my the sun right on my left. I wanna end up a little upstream so I'm not covering the same not covering the same pathway, which would be over that way. I kind of circled this way and now I'm heading that way. Let's see how I do. There we go. Nailed it. <gasps> Is that a duck or a loon? That's a duck. I just got a duck on the wing. All right, now I just gotta get the canoe and retrieve him. All right. <laughs> what happened? I came out of the woods at the river and there was a duck and so I snuck through the brush and I shot him on the wing. He's down, he's right in the river, let's get him. Cool, let's go. All right. Just a bend around from the uh, where our campsite is so maybe he'll be right here in front of the campsite and I'll just swim out and get it. Shoot unless you're like, don't shoot. No, I, yeah, I'm not gonna say that. I unless was like, unless you're aiming at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of 
grieving the loss of my duck. So looking forward to, you know, getting a duck on the wing. It was there. And then I, I we went out, canoed. I flew the drone, looked for it with the drone. I can't imagine where it could have gone, you know. Uh, fortunately, you know, this is the wild. Animals go down. Somebody will benefit from it somewhere along the line. Some animal will. And, uh, but I also walked up the bank on this side thinking maybe if it came, tried to tuck itself into the bushes. And as I was doing so, a duck flew from the other side of the river up and away. Maybe I just rung his bell and uh, he popped up, scooted over there, rested up a bit. And as we paddled by, he didn't move. And then when I walked over there, he finally said, I'm good. And he took off and he flew right from across from right where I shot him. So. I guess he, he either lived, hopefully he lives to fight another day. So we've got some bear fat and some bear meat. We're cooking it up. It's gonna be lunch for today. And then we'll take the bone that's been, cause he's gonna debone it, Chris is gonna debone her. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be able to have ourselves some uh, awesome bear meat. We're putting, We've been putting back the beaver, and uh, it's just, whew, there's still a little bit left, but uh, after five days of eating beaver and bear fat, uh, I am looking forward to some bear meat. That should be good, especially after my, my loss today. Ooh, probably going on four, five days now, and we had it frozen initially, we let it defrost. This meat is freezing cold in our primitive cooler. There is almost no risk of spoiling for at least two or three weeks by my estimation. You can always do a sniff test. If it starts to look green, it's probably not edible anymore, but this stuff, this will keep for two weeks and that probably it's even becoming more tender as the bacteria starts working on the meat, breaking it down. All right, bear meat and bear fat with some wadobo and a little bit of water. That's gonna be good. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. There we go. That's gonna be delicious. Feels weird not using my shovel, but I'm trying out the patch that I was sent. This will be in deep water, so it won't matter too much. But uh, it's best to have a hobo reel be smooth at the top so you can zing your line out there and let it slide off the end of here. You see what I'm talking about when I rig it up. This one's also for batoning or clubbing unfinished ducks. <laughs> it's a survival hatchet, so inside, of course, is a myriad of different tools. Did I unscrew the right parts, find the right tool? I did. Looking for the knife. Got a bit of a saw thing going on, some sort of a hook thing. Probably worked great for sticking it down there in a fish's mouth and releasing a hook. And uh, comes good and sharp. It's pretty smooth. Somewhere in between another one of these linkages, I think down at the bottom here, a ferro rod, so it's a complete survival hatchet here. Hammerhead on the back. Let's see if there's a 
and a compass, which is just as good as any compass that comes on a survival tool. As long as you know where south is and you turn it so the S is facing south, that way is always facing north and you're good to go. There it is. There's a ferro rod right there. Wind it on to the end for casting. There we go. And one hobo reel. In all our glory, let's go fishing. Let's see how the bear is doing. Ooh, that's looking good. We'll cover this back up and get out there fishing. That was an epic cast there, it was like 13 feet. That's not bad for a canoe. Yeah, I, guess so. I, I could do it from the shore, I can get like 40 feet, but. So no luck on the fish, but we finally made it up to the main lake. Check it out here. It's just spreads out before us. We never made it all the way up here the other day. And there's some like cliffs over there kind of going down into the water, some ledges. And over here it's really steep, so it's probably a lot better fishing. But we see a little clearing here and maybe a building through the woods. So I want to take a peek, see if it's like an old old hunting shack or something like that. That would be kind of neat to see. Is it a shack or is it a palace? Let's see. Oh my goodness. Looks like a palace. Beautiful little shelter here out in the woods. Look at the, uh, see we got a little skylight there. So it's not too old, the bubble skylight. And looks like it's had some damage over the years. See a lot of, a little bit of rot going on. And a lot of these, a lot of what looks like claw marks. It's taking some abuse from the local bear population or something. I imagine they probably come in with a boat though. I don't, we didn't see anything else on the mount, map out this way. This is, I mean, it's like a full on resort in there. Oh, you got the, oh man, you got me good. Oh. Jeepers. I was just looking up, I was just looking like, like, I was like, man, it probably was built from all these large pines right here. I mean, there, this clearing was probably made and then turned into this built, this beautiful place. That's all right. Crazy you. <laughs> Your heart's still going? Yeah. He got me good. He got me good. So creepy looking in there. It's all locked up and boarded up. Yeah, it does sort of look like something from a like something from a Stephen King movie. Oh my god, a cup yeah. This is like the perfect place to film a horror movie. Yeah, it's like Isn't a it? giant fireplace. It 
<laughs> it's just like they got that building. Like it's scary a... things could come out of any any one of those windows. And yeah. The forest back here and the remoteness. There's a couple canoes in there though. That makes me think that weird people don't live here. Because <laughs> they have canoes. Because they have canoes. Modern canoes. Not like an yeah. old cedar strip. That's so cool. A big old stairway with a hallway to both sides, it looks like. Big old fireplace. Wow, this is a neat little place. Wouldn't this be a nice little uh, cabin to come to for a couple weeks during the year and go out there and fish in, and have the whole family out here playing, running around, cooking stuff. Considering the size of these pines, they really probably didn't have to cut any more than where that clearing is for the log cabin and then just build it. That is such a neat thing. How fun would that be? Happy to get out of here. I've I've done what I wanted to do here. Yeah. Unless you want to try to, like, no, not unless. No, like, I don't. We're done. We've done everything. Well, yeah. All right. So we're changing lodgings in the morning. It's official. We came out here. We found it. We saw it. We conquered it. We ate as much as they had here, and we're ready to get going. All right. We are back. Get the fire going, and we get our. Bear meat and bear fat for dinner. Woo! Uh, I'm excited about this. Chris has already nailed the fire restart. And this has been sitting out here, simmering away. Ooh, it's too hot to lift. Oh, it's all. Wow, look. Just look at it. Would you look at this? Yeah. Look at that. It's really, really hot. Look at that. Oh, that's like a layer of yellow, melted, rendered fat. Oh my goodness. It's cooked. It just dissolves. Perfect. There's like nothing. Piece of meat dissolves? It's like, yeah. It's just, it's like baby food. Oh man. It's like, it's so cooked, it just like melts on your tongue, you know? Indeed. That's amazing. I would like a side of rice with this, please. Oh. And some, and some veggies. That, that does I'm, sound good. I would be just done. Mm-hmm. Noodles, I would, you know, some. Oh, oh, some of those fat wiggly noodles yeah, there. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. to soak up all the extra. Like the kind that people put in beef stews. And stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's probably a good amount. That's probably... I'll do. I don't know. What's a spoonful of butter? Like, how many calories in a spoonful <sighs> of butter? Does anybody know? A spoonful of lard. It's good, man. Oh, the bear meat, too. Melt in your mouth, like you said. Beautiful. Next time on Wilderness Living Challenge Season 4. We're packing it in, heading back down the river, and about three hours back towards North Bay where we know there's some catfish. Want to change up that meal plan once again. When you're determined to go fishing and your ex-wife's car won't make it up into the bushes. Says no parking. Not no re-landscaping so you can drive around said fence. Somebody's got fish envy. I got two and he's got, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, no, it just the, melts. Melts the, in your mouth. The meat is melting in your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's the meat. You don't have to chew it. It's perfect. And the fat is just perfect. All right. Looks like the rain's coming in, so we have to cut the short. I don't want to stop eating. It's so good. Chris is running around putting his stuff in his tent. I'm trying to think if there's anything I have out. Oh, my solar charger. With all of my uh, solar charger and battery packs. I better put that in. Well, the rain seems to be settling, so I'm back at my hammock and uh, grabbed another Happy Rock for tonight because I enjoyed my little Happy Rock last night so much, warming me up. I'm gonna take that to bed with me. And early to bed. Early to bed is early to rise. Might be able to get a duck in the morning if it's not raining. And then we're changing lodgings. Hopefully we get some big catfish or something like that to reward us for changing, changing up sights.
All right, I am in for the night. All right. <sighs> it better my happy rock. Let it rain. I'm secure. My war bonnet hammock, warm with my outdoor vitals, under quilt and sleeping bag. I could care less how much it rains. I'm going to have a good night's sleep. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Fowler out. <laughs>